Hello and welcome to Rick's RC Flying Channel. Uh, this uh, video here is just to give you an update uh, on the PL12 air truck project, which is the uh, crop duster from Australia. And uh, it's a scratch build project totally. And um, where I left off about a year ago with it was the fuselage was in its raw wood state uh, with some filler and then it was fiberglass and then just not long ago recently i uh, got the primer on it and which is an important step because it basically shows you what the airplane will look like when you get the base coat <clears throat> and uh, as this airplane as a matter of fact will be predominantly white with orange trim and uh, if there's something that you know, is a, a minor blemish or defect or anything like that, it'll show up when the primer is applied. And um, I was pleasantly surprised. It all turned out really well. There's really uh, nothing for me to do uh, in terms of getting it now ready for the base coat. It is ready. And uh, it'll get a final sanding prep using 320 grit sandpaper and then very lightly and then with 400 grit paper. And then it'll be basically ready to receive the base coat. Uh, <clears throat> I installed a side cockpit window here also and installed the cockpit door window. These, uh, all the windows are laid in frames. And uh, so on the outer perimeter, it's all seamless and even the interior. So it's not a question of, you know, where you kind of glue the window from behind. Um, they're actually installed like the real airplane. Um, here's like these small window frames. And uh, I also installed the upper cabin windows. Now you probably can't see it uh, because I had to install these ahead of time. This upper cabin area was actually pre-painted last year because of the challenge to get spray equipment in there. And uh, so that was actually done while it was being constructed. There is an upper floor here, and then this rear portion is open uh, access from the lower cabin. And of course they provide windows there for, for lighting and what have you. And um, so I had to put the windows in. And again, it's hard to tell because there's masking tape here. And the, the primer, of course, you know, covered everything. Uh, now, I didn't do these windows here because I, I, I could have installed them now, but then I would have to mask the windows on the inside as well. All these windows, I'd have to get inside and mask it, and I thought that would be a little awkward, you know, getting your hands in there. So what I'm planning is to paint, finish the airplane, and then install the windows. The windows go in flush. All the windows are like this. They go in flush. So you can see it. But the, the frame is recessed. And then the plexiglass goes in. And then the frame goes over it. And this sits flush then as well. And uh, it makes for a very clean installation. Matter of fact, that's the way the real airplane is. So uh that's uh that's basically how they're installed the other thing is the uh, door has a round handle uh kind of grip system and there's going there's a pin that goes in this way and a pin that goes that way and as you turn the handle uh all the pins move and that uh, secures the door properly so for all intents and purposes, the fuselage is finished, except for some final painting. It will, of course, receive a uh, full cockpit um, when the time comes. And um, the next step is the all the uh, tail components are have been, you know, basically uh, completed. They actually have already the fiberglass cloth. Every they're very light, but this is very strong. I, I really stayed focused to keep them as light as possible. Even the elevator, it, that this is all built up. Uh, we're talking just ounces here. The other thing I did, which 
was, I guess one could say it's almost overkill, but I wasn't really sure to what scale level I was going to take it. And, it, and what I mean is all the flight controls are internal. So there's no push rods, no servos to be seen, not even control horns. Everything's inside uh, the flight control. So for example, here in the rudder is the, this is the mechanism for the elevator. Okay, that's how this works, right? And this rests inside, it's a T-tail arrangement. You can see it comes out there and the elevator is horn is inside. So there will be nothing to be seen. Um, the whole airplane's like that. So um, see how that all works out at the end of the day. Same thing with the rudder, the rudder horn, everything's inside. Now, I looked at about a half a dozen other PL-12 models that were built around the world uh, in different countries. I uh, came across one, for example, in, that was built in Australia. It was quarter scale. This is one-fifth scale. Comes in at a 100-inch wingspan. The quarter scale one was about 120 inches. And um, in, in hindsight, I kind of wish I went the quart, one-quarter scale uh, because I probably then would have put a twin-cylinder gas engine in because it would fit in the cowling. When I came up with the one-fifth scale, I couldn't get a twin cylinder gas in there without completely butchering up the, uh, the cowling or the cylinders. Uh, and, and that's what really steered me in putting in an electric motor in this airplane because I did not want to uh, carve up the cowling. Um, and who knows, we'll see how, how this turns out, how well it flies. Maybe one day, uh, I would build a quarter scale version, you know, sell this one and, and build a quarter scale gas powered. Anyways, that has yet to be seen. And uh, so the, I mean, and what a lot of other modelers did and understandably and very typical in a lot of airplanes, for example, for the tail, they simply cut this out, installed the servo right in here, little short push rod, put a control horn on, just run the wires through the boom, and you're good to go. How easy is that? <laughs> but no, I had to come up with this whole internal control uh, linkage system. Anyways, um, the next big part, which I kind of been procrastinating on because I really I'm not sure how it's going to quite turn out. And won't this airplane be a lot of fun in a crosswind with a profile like that? Not only does it look weird, it's going to be challenging maybe to fly. I don't know. So with the wing, um, of course, it rests in here like this. We've got the boom here. Of course, another one on the other side. <clears throat> They're two separate booms. There, in no way are they joined together. <clears throat> and the big thing, of course, is when they're when the wings are on and I have the two booms, Getting, making sure that these two T-tails are perfectly lined up with all the various falcon points. It's got to be very exact. So once I get past that challenge, the next one is, is making sure that at the end of the day that this boom is strong enough and 100% rigid. Um, like right now, I did build this all out of spruce. And of course, understandably, at this stage, you can flex it. But what I intend on doing is reinforcing it with carbon fiber. <clears throat> then, of course, it's going to get sheeting and then fiberglass cloth and uh, epoxy resin. So I'm hoping when that is all done that, um, that it'll be strong enough because... I can't afford any of these T-tails under load to flex, uh, because if that can happen, uh, flutter can take on a whole new meaning. So um, yeah, I'm hoping that's gonna all work out as planned. 
if you notice this hole here, uh, this actually is going to be removed. There's two landing lights in there. It'll be operational. So <clears throat> that's the next big thing is getting the, the uh, tails uh, attached to the booms and, and completing the booms. And then after that, basically the airplane's done. Then I can go ahead and uh, fiberglass the wings and fiberglass the booms and keep my fingers crossed that's all going to work out. And... Uh, you know, I've had my uh, modeler friends come into the shop. I've had the wings on, and they they look at this and they go, "What a weird looking biplane! There's a bottom wing and a top wing. It's a biplane." Well, not really. So I'll, just for fun, I'll leave it with uh, uh, you modelers out there if you're so inclined to. Uh, make a comment on what you think this really is called. Is it a biplane? And uh, we'll see how that goes and uh, then I'll let you know what it's called. So um, if you have any questions or comments, as always, uh, I, I welcome them. If you like the video, please select like and or subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.